So I know you've heard me say this before. If you take good care of your dive gear, your dive gear will take good care of you. But also, if you take good care of your dive gear, you will get the best out of your investment that you made. And that even goes all the way down to your dive mask as well. And in today's video, we're going to explore several different ways of how I personally clean both my mask and my daughter's mask to make sure we're getting the best use out of it and the best investment and to make sure that it lasts for a very long time. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now i got a quick question for you. How do you clean your dive mask? Do you simply just rinse it off after every dive? Do you clean it after a week's worth of diving? Or do you physically tear it apart, disassemble it part by part or piece by piece to actually do a good thorough cleaning? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you the top three ways that I personally clean my dive mask and kind of explain why I do that. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. So guys, I got several different masks here. These are my three go-to masks. Of course, I got my instructor mask, my salvage mask, and then my tropical diving mask. I've also got two more that's already semi-broke down here. I've got the straps taken off of them. These are my daughter's uh, two personal masks. So you'll see her straps there. Um, I go through a three-stage cleaning process every time I clean my mask. So the first stage, of course, is after a simple dive, I just rinse it off fresh, clean water. It's very easy to do. You can do it in a spigot. You can do it in a sink. Uh, you can just use a water bottle. So if you got a water bottle, you can kind of squirt it out really good. Or after a week's worth of diving, I'll actually use a, um, a little bit of soapy water here. And this is just warm, soapy water. Nothing fancy. It's just dome dish detergent in there. And I'll scrub the mask really good. Now, you can use some type of mask cleaner. You guys know I love the Pow Palau product. Pow Palau is one of the most all-natural products out there. And no, this is not a sponsor video but if you want to know what pal palau is it's that right there it's just an all-natural cleaner and i'll use it too but sometimes i'll just use soap and i'll scrub it up really good rinse it out fresh clean water and let it dry and then the third stage of course is breaking the mask down and that's what we're going to do in this video i'm actually going to be breaking down five different masks here we're just going to do one for video purposes because i'm going to show you the safest and easiest method to do it um, and then i'll show you actually how i clean it too especially if your mask ends up getting a little bit of mold or mildew in it that can happen if you store your dive gear wet as we do sometimes that can happen and i'm gonna show you the easiest and simplest method to get it out as well but with that being said let's jump into today's video let's break these masks down and show you how we take good care of our dive mask so guys, I do want to make a quick disclaimer. I am a Mares technician and all these masks that I've got today are Mares masks. So if you're not a technician or you don't have the proper tools, you may want to seek out a technician before you go as far as what I'm fixing to do here. Um, in the Mares line, of course, we have a little mask tool. And the cool thing about this tool, you can get this tool whether you're a technician or not. And breaking down a mask is actually very easy to do. But anytime you buy prescription lenses from Mares, of course, they send a little tool. You can actually order this tool yourself um, or if you have a different manufacturer mask that uses the same similar tool you can use it all it is, is just a plastic wedge uh, it's got a sharp little point on one side it's got a little uh, beveled edge here on the other side or a little um, chiseled edge here and what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be taking this outside frame off so in my daughter's mask you'll notice everything is clear but this top cap piece and this top cap piece, the pink piece that we're looking at, that's what we're actually going to be taking off here. And to do that, I'm going to wedge this part of the chisel tool up into where the little um, slots are here. So you'll see just a little indication there. We've got another one right here. And all I'm going to do is just popping it up in there until I can get that frame to pop. Once I get that frame to pop, like so, then I know I can just kind of work myself around until all those pieces just pop out. Just like that right there. Now you do want to be careful. It does become very flimsy as you do this. Um, but once you get it all out, it should just pop just like that. You just continue to work yourself around just like that. Now we're going to go to the other side and pop it. Keep on working ourselves around, pop it and pop it again. And just like that, the top frame comes off very, very easily. We're going to go ahead and lay that aside. Now, I do want to be careful here. I don't want to damage the lens in any way. These are tempered lenses. So there's the lens. This is the left side lens. And you will notice 
the word tempered there, not only does that let me know that the lens is tempered, it's also going to let me know the orientation once I reinstall it as well. So I'm just going to kind of lay that aside as well. Do the same thing with the other one. Once again, it says tempered on it. It also is going to be spelt in the right order. You know, it's not going to be reversed. That's going to let me know the orientation when I go to um, reassemble the mask. And then, of course, I am going to take the skirt away from the outer frame here, and it's just a groove that it sets in. So all you got to do is just simply squeeze in like that and the skirt will pop away from the outer frame and now I can do a good thorough cleaning of this mask. All right, now that we've got the mask completely disassembled here, you'll see here's the skirt, here's the outer frame, I got the two lenses, and then I've got the uh, actual frame of the mask itself here. I'm just gonna inspect it really quick and look to see what's on it. I see a lot of dirt and grime, maybe a little bit of snot from my daughter here, but I don't see any mold or mildew, which is a good thing. My daughter takes very good care of her gear, so we're gonna clean it. And if we look right here in the corner, you'll see just a little bit of dirt spot. We're gonna get that little dirt spot out as well. So the simplest and easiest method is warm, soapy water. All I gotta do is just set the components down in it. I'm gonna let it soak for a minute or two. And then of course, we can start the scrubbing process. Scrubbing process is very simple to do. You just simply take a toothbrush, you got a toothbrush in there, and we just simply scrub all the components. Once all the components are good and clean, then we're gonna rinse it out with fresh clean water and we're gonna allow it to dry. Once it's dried, then we're gonna start the reassembly process. Now, let's say that the mask actually has a little bit of mold or mildew. What actually causes that? Well, for me personally, a lot of times when I'm teaching classes, this is my mask here, a lot of times when I'm teaching classes at the end of the night I'll put all my wet gear in my pelican box and it just stays wet until the next morning or it'll stay wet for a couple of days and then of course I'll pull it out and clean it all that sometimes I just don't have time to clean my gear well if you leave wet gear as you can see my, my mask is wet in here if you leave wet gear in a closed off environment for long enough especially in the summer months it's going to start to grow a little bit of mold or mildew in it. It's nothing that you've really got to worry about as long as you clean it out. Obviously, we don't want to dive it with a, on there, but we're going to clean it. What do I actually use to do that? Well, I just use pure bleach, pure Clorox bleach. I'll put it in my little wash container. I'll set the skirt down in it or the lens, whatever I need to, and I'll let that uh, bleach eat that mold and mildew up. I'll scrub it really good. Then I'm going to wash the bleach off. I'm going to use the same soap. Uh, this is just Dawn dish detergent. Same uh, washing detergent whatnot that I'm going to use. Clean all the bleach off and then I'm going to clean it out with uh, or clean it off with fresh clean water as well. I would caution you, don't put your strap covers in there because it's going to bleach them off. Obviously, I'm going to take all these strap covers off, but that's how I deal with mold and mildew. Just a little bit of bleach goes a long way. And then, of course, I will repeat the procedure with those masks that I deal with my daughters here. Simply scrub it, and then I will start the reassemble process. So yeah, the cleaning process doesn't have to be hard. I've seen videos here on YouTube where people, they make it too simple sometimes, um, and they just show you what to do after every dive. They don't really show you what to do after, say, a season of diving or a couple weeks of diving, something like that. Um, and then I've seen videos where they make it way too difficult on how to clean a mask. Most masks nowadays, unless you get a frameless mask, they're designed to be taken apart like this. Anybody can really disassemble them. You don't have to be a gear technician to do it. Um, and most manufacturers will sell you tools that you can break these apart. You can get them through uh, multiple distributors. Sometimes you can get them from your local dive shop. Um, but yeah, it's a simple, simple process. You just want to make sure that you're very thorough. You do want to be careful. Don't break your lens in any way. As you can see, I'm just scrubbing the lens here. And then I'm going to simply rinse them off and then, of course, reassemble my mask that easy. All right, now that we got all the components cleaned up and rinsed off fresh, clean water, of course, we're just going to sit here and let them dry. You can expedite this. You can take you a little microfiber towel or something and dry it off really good. Or you can do a lot of times what, what we'll do. So this, we'll just use a little air nozzle here and just kind of blow dry them out. But for the sake of the video and time, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this mask and show you just how easy it is to reassemble. And then, of course, we'll, uh, we'll get it readjusted in my daughter's face and let her go dive. All right, so the reassembly phase here um, can be a little meticulous just because you want to make sure you get everything right. But I do kind of have everything laid out the way I need it to. I've got my skirt. I've got my uh, lower frame. I've got my lenses oriented correctly. And then I've got my upper frame. And I'm just going to work in that order as I reassemble here. So I'm going to go ahead and take the skirt. Once again, do a quick inspection of it. If I need to dry it off, I can dry it off, blow dry it, whatever. Or I can just simply let it air dry. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and take the frame here and I'm going to make sure it's oriented properly. So now that everything's there, I'm going to go ahead and what I'm doing is actually working this groove of the skirt onto this ledge inside the frame here. And I'm going to make sure that it's seated properly all the way around. If it's not seated properly, of course, the lenses will not be sealed into the mask. And of course, it's not going to uh, be watertight there. So I'm just going to work my way all the way around, make sure everything gets seated in there. So there's one side, very simple. It just pops into place there. And of course, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side. Get it popped up into place. Just like so. And we are perfectly seated all the way around. As you can see, now the skirt is reattached to the frame itself. Make sure there's no bubbles in it. I don't see any bubbles. It's not extruding out in any way. Now we can go ahead and add the lenses. Once again, earlier we talked about the, um, the word tempering here on the lens. That's going to let us know the proper orientation of the way it should sit in the mass. So I'm just going to set it, make sure it's nice and flat. On top of that skirt that we just installed, just like there. And of course, you can, if you want to, you can wipe off the fingerprints and all that. And I also want to make sure those little grooves that these little tabs sit in, I want to make sure that they're open. There's nothing blocking them. Okay, so that one's good. Now I'm going to take the other lens, make sure it's oriented properly and kind of pop it into place there. Everything should be nice and flat. Get my fingerprints off her lens there. Make sure those little holes are open. That one's open. All four of those appear to be open. And now next we are going to add this top frame. Once again, this is the part that you want to be very uh, careful of when you're taking it off and of course when you're uh, reassembling or reinstalling. I usually like to start at the top and work my way around one side and then I'll work my way around the other side. So start at the top, you should hear a little click when they go into place. Okay, so there's a click, there's a click. Okay, all those are in place, so very easily, those four just snapped right into place for me there. So we're gonna do the other side. Okay, got those two in. And that one's in. And that one's in. So now those four are back in place there. I'm going to do a final inspection both internally and externally just to make sure everything's good in place. I can give just a little pull on the skirt to make sure it's nice and secure. Very simple. Yep. All is good there. And of course, if I do want to do one final cleaning, I can clean the lens, of course, just like that. And now all that's left is to add her skirt back on, or I'm sorry, her strap back on. Hers have these little quick cinch clips. Makes it very easy to um, disassemble and assemble. Make sure we get it right, get her name right. Yep, perfect. And just like that, her mask is back up in operation. So guys, there you go. That's how simple, how easy it is to thoroughly clean your mask. Whether you rinse it off after every dive, or you wash it after a week of diving in salt water, or you do like we do, we usually go through this process about once a quarter, or once every three months. We completely disassemble it. We clean it really well. If there's any mold or mildew, we'll get rid of that as well. And we just do a good thorough inspection about once a quarter to make sure our mask is going to be good in working order. We can replace the strap if we need to. We can replace the strap cover if we need to. And once again, if you take good care of your dive gear, it will take good care of you as well. But I still got one more mask of hers to do, and I've got three of my masks to do, so I'm going to go ahead and jump off here. But if you've got any questions about cleaning your mask specifically, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to answer it the best I can as quick as I can as well. But that's going to do it for today. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.